Hello, it's so great to be with you today. If you notice, my background has changed just a little bit. Um, in my normal spot, there is a new bird's nest and mama bird is very protective of her babies. And she says, I am not allowed to be that close to the nest. So we've moved over a little bit, got a little different background, but um, we're still here and we're ready to worship together today. So um, we're gonna start with our scripture today. Remember, we've been in the end of John for a while now. We started on Easter with John, um, and we have followed the Easter season, season. And this, I believe, is the last passage in John. So this is our last week of celebrating Easter tide through the end of John. So if you would join me, we're gonna be in John 21, starting in verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? So he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to him to show by what kind of death he was to be glorified, to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our story today is one that follows the resurrection in John. It's a story about Peter. Now, Peter has denied Jesus three times on Jesus's way to the cross. He's realized the horror of that denial. And when we find him here, he's back at his old job. He's back fishing, as though Jesus never existed at all. He has tried, he has failed, and he has gone back to his old life. And that's when Jesus shows up. And Peter and Jesus have this conversation, and we're going to look at that together today. There are a couple different things you can look at in this text. What is pretty much agreed on is that in this dialogue, Jesus reinstates Peter as a disciple. Peter denied Jesus three times, and three times Jesus asked the same question and then gives the same command. It's as if with each question, Jesus is giving Peter a chance to turn back toward him. That by itself is pretty powerful. I mean, think about that just for a minute. Jesus forgave Peter for denying him. And not like one of those internet denials either. You know, when you get an email or a Facebook thing and it says, if you don't pass this on to five people, then you're denying Christ. No, it wasn't something like that. This is real denial. This is like being asked if you're a follower, follower looking at Jesus's beaten face and saying no right there in front of Jesus. It's saying, I would never do that. And then within hours, breaking the promise, not once, not twice, but three times. This was failure as a Christian. And no matter where you are in your faith, at some point, we all fail. We have failed to share our faith. We failed to forgive. We failed to live as a Christian example. We failed to make a meeting or to fulfill a responsibility. In fact, every time we take communion, 
we start with a confession of our failures. Face it, we are failures. We understand what Peter must have felt like. But in this passage, Jesus doesn't let Peter stay a failure. Jesus picks up the failure and makes him a disciple. And isn't that a great thing for all of us failures to hear? But Jesus doesn't stop there. Jesus gives him a command after each response of Peter's responses. And that's where we come to in this story. Because every time Jesus asked Peter if he loved him, Peter says, undeniably, yes. But Jesus didn't leave it at that. Jesus said, prove it. Prove it. Feed my lambs. Prove it. Shepherd my sheep. Prove it. Feed my sheep. Three different proofs using different words in the original language. Let's look at that and what Jesus was saying. The first proof of love, feed my lambs. Now in John, Jesus is always talking about his followers as sheep. He is the shepherd and we are the sheep. We follow him and he lays down his life to protect us. But Jesus doesn't start with the word for sheep here. He starts with lambs. Peter is charged with feeding the youngest followers of Christ. Now, what does Jesus mean when he says feed? Well, I think he means to feed their souls. I think there's, you know, that, that strong teaching aspect, a sense of nourishment. There's a sense of giving them what they need to grow up strong and healthy in their faith. The disciple of Jesus is charged to feed the youngest, most immature person's faith. The second thing Peter was charged to do, to show his love, was to tend my sheep. Now, the job has changed. It's not about nourishment. It's about protection and care. We are to watch out for each of Jesus' followers, not just his youngest followers, but his old mature followers as well. We are to care and protect each other. And the third thing Jesus says is to feed my sheep. Not just feed the lambs, not just care for the older disciples, but to feed the grown disciples as well. We feed the lambs among us, we care and protect each other, and we feed each other. This is the very nature of the Christian life. The church are the people who we couldn't be as good of Christians without. We couldn't be as strong, we couldn't be as faithful without each other. But at the same time, we are that person for someone else. We feed and we are fed. We shepherd and we are shepherded. Now, Jesus didn't end with this commandment, though. He finishes a little bit more dramatically. Oh, I love it when Jesus gets dramatic. To understand what he does that's so dramatic, we have to know a little bit about how Peter was called originally. See, when Jesus started rounding up his disciples, he went around and asked them, one by one, follow me. In fact, we talked about this last week with um, the disciples that were originally fishermen. He, originally, he went to that shore and he called them. Originally, he went to that shore and he called them to follow me. But that's not actually how he called Peter. See, Peter actually just started tagging along after his brother told him about Jesus. Jesus never really called him. He never said, follow me to Peter. But here, after Jesus has reinstated Peter as his disciple, and after he's told Peter to feed his lambs and to shepherd and feed his sheep, Jesus does something amazing. He looks at Peter, not the fallen, scared, denying Peter. He looks at the Peter who loves him. He looks at the Peter that he's entrusting his sheep to, and he says the words, the words 
saved for his very closest followers, he says to Peter, follow me. Peter has mission. He has his leader and he is ready to answer Jesus' call to follow him. These are the words, these are the words that Jesus says to you this morning. He has asked you if you love him. He's told you to feed and care for his lambs and sheep. But now he whispers into your soul, follow me. Will you follow him? Let's pray together. Jesus, we come and we say, of course, God, you know that we love you. Even when we are still failures, you find your way to us. And you ask, do we still love you? And we answer, yes, we still love you. Jesus, help us to feed your lambs. Show us how to shepherd your sheep. Teach us to feed your sheep. Jesus, help us every day to turn back to you and answer your call, to hear you whisper into our souls, follow me, amen. Praise God from whom I